Now if you clicked on this video and you're like, Taylor, bold of you to assume that I've read during quarantine. Well, you're absolutely right because I didn't read that much either. <laughs> during quarantine, we had a lot of time on our hands. I had beaucoup time. That's French for a lot. So it gave me a lot of time to decide for myself, do I one, not read because I've been reading books unwillingly from English classes for the past three years, or two, be the growing, glowing, goddess, bougie, bad girl that I am and read a book. <laughs> I chose the latter and I learned a couple things that really helped me out. First book we've got, Black Enough. Bro, let me just read you this. Let me just read you this. Are you ready? I'm about to narrate for you. Black is sister. Oh, that's not the right one. Hold on. Oh, there's no summary. I'll give you one. Black Enough is a book of short stories by various authors about black teens basically being in situations that question the idea of being black enough. I resonate so much with this book because in middle school, let me tell you, I was an identity crisis mess. I went to a private school, a private middle school that was mostly white people as in I was the only black girl in my class of the entire middle school. And I had a lot of struggle with feeling black enough or acting too white. This book is a, paints a beautiful, funny, awesome, uh, what are some other adjectives that I learned in AP Ling English? Wow, I can't even speak English. This book is funny. This book is adorable. And if you find yourself not being able to finish an entire book, that's okay. These are just short stories. Stamped basically paints a picture of the entire history of racism. racism. That's right, you heard it here, folks. Racism. Race, 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 race. It paints a very clear and telling story of the history of racism and how much it is rooted and sewn into our society today. It's a really good book. This is the version that was made for teens to understand and there is another version, I can't remember the name of it right now, it's not a history book. It's something that you can actually read and feel like your friend is telling you about this history. So I would recommend this. Black Girl Approve. The next book that I read was More Than Enough by Elaine Welteroth. Let me just take a second. I pledge allegiance, just kidding. More Than Enough is by Elaine Welteroth, who was the first black, not me forgetting, the second black editor-in-chief in Condé Nast history. And Condé Nast is the company that has Vogue, Glamour, I think. But that's not what this book is about. This book is about her journey to not only becoming the second black um, editor-in-chief, but her journey in becoming who she is as a black woman, as a boss, and as a person who aspires for greatness. Those sound like big AP language words, but this book goes right here. Because as I was reading this, it felt like I was reading the pages of my future biography. I don't know how to explain it. It just hit a chord, you know? She tells her story in such a way where, once again, it feels like it's your best friend um, talking to you. She has these such profound moments where she makes you feel like you were there with her. And you feel it so vividly. It's like, wow, I can achieve that greatness. I will achieve that greatness. And I am already great. Period, point blank, that was a good, that was good what I just said. Did y'all hear it? Rewind, play it again if you didn't hear it again. Cause I'm proud of myself. More Than Enough by Lane Welteroth. This is one of my favorite books of all time now that I have read it. See, reading a book does get you something. Famous wise words. <laughs> the last book, I reread this book. It is my favorite book and it is Even the Stars Look Lonesome by Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou, my, my author. Even the Stars Look Lonesome is a book of short lessons, short or long lessons that Maya Angelou has learned throughout her life, whether it be about love, sexuality, um, beauty in life, what home feels like. You know, all these various topics from such not only a wise but well-lived woman. Whenever you read this, it is art in your hands. It feels like she is speaking poetry about her life and it is so, so beautiful. There are specific things in here that I feel so connected in my soul that I never had the words or the ability to write out. If you decide that from this video that you want to read a book or you keep on scrolling, 
to your know, Netflix, the Netflix version of the book you really want to read. See you. That's okay, I do it too. My favorite passage, A Song to Sensuality, and it's on page 33. If you ever decide to get this. These are the books that I read during quarantine. Please let me know if you want to read or have already read some of these books. I'd love to know your thoughts about them because I love every single one of them. You know what? It's a proven fact that you can read books faster, faster than anyone in the world and still retain the information if you subscribe to this channel. I don't make the rules. That's fact. It's fact. Don't fact check me. But it's true. If you can name this tree, you're a real one. And I will give you a hint. The answer is on my Instagram somewhere. <laughs> that means you gotta visit my Instagram. Once again, I don't make the rules. That's fact. Thank you for watching this. And I hope you stay longer. I'm trying to be more consistent on this channel. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!